Hey my friend, it's Dirk Chan. Have you ever asked how does people build Facebook? Or how do people build Instagram or Snapchat? Or maybe you want to build a productivity app that asks the user to log in and then sign up and then store some data on the web or in other words, your backend, you have your own backend. Or maybe you want to build a game that you store the user data and then store some characters, some store some videos and some assets. Or maybe you want to build a social network app that allows users to chat with each other, that allows users to um, send videos, send photos, share all of those things, like, comment, all of those things. How do people build that thing? That is the topic of this video. I would love to share with you of the idea that most nowadays, how most apps work, and more importantly, how you as an iOS developer or an Android developer or web developer can build that too. So that is the topic today. Now, before we do that, it's very simple. Before we do that, let's imagine, let's Think about one app idea that you got. Let's say I have an app like jump back a few years ago, right? 10 years ago. I have the app idea to build Facebook or Instagram, right? The app idea is I want users to be able to log in, sign up, and then share photos. Just that. It's simple, right? How can we build that? Well, as it turns out that whenever you have an app idea like that, Right? You're going to have as just like the process of development as for every developer, for every startup, that you have an app idea, you draw it on a paper or you a fancy, you draw it on an iPad Pro, you draw it like this and like that. You have something we call a simple mainframe or just some drawing, some sketches, right? And then you have to bring that thing into Something we're going to a team of designers, right? A designer's team. So that they look, they make it pretty, they make it nice. And from that designer team, you can create something we call a prototype. The prototype is not an actual app. It is just some images, some, if it is fancier, we have some animation, some interaction, some transition from one screen to another screen. For example, if I go to Instagram, the app idea is Instagram, I go there, Lock in screen or welcome screen and then lock in screen if the user don't have an account then we goes into sign up screen after we sign up screen we are going to go into the news feed right after the news feed goes into the camera the camera will post photo those kind of things the the flow of the app that is the work of the founder of you as a developer or if you're working a team then that is the founder or the kind of like the research and develop, uh, development department those kind of stuff right after that they're going to hand over to of uh, this is will be um uh, more specific in web development than this, than iOS development or Android development, right? But we have a front-end developer. Now, front-end developers is the ones who create the app inside the thing, okay? Now, the front-end, which is like the app that the users interact on the screen. Then we also have a back-end server, a back-end developers that use things like Python, PHP, Ruby and Rails, JavaScript, those kind of things. And for the front end, if you build apps for iPhone, then you use Swift. If you build apps for Android, you use Java and Android Studio. If you build app for web development, then maybe you use Java, maybe you use HTML, of course you use HTML and CSS. Um, maybe you use uh, things like JavaScript, which is for the interaction, right? Or you use Ruby on Rails, those kind of stuff, okay? Now, here is how the model works. Why is that front end? Why is that all of those back end? Look at this app, okay? For example, this app. So we have something like a back end, right? All of the tools that we use. I personally prefer to use Sketch, Xcode, and Firebase when I build iOS apps. Sketch is just like Photoshop. It's simpler, it's easier to use, it's it's better, okay? It personally, when I design apps, is it allows us to draw very easily. Now, all of those things, when we have an app like this, okay? The app, the front end like that, and then this is the back end, I use Firebase. You can use things like Amazon AWS. You can use things like Google Cloud. You can use things like, um, what, what is that thing? Heroku or, or Par service on Heroku, those kind of things, okay? Now, here's how the model work for every single app, you name it. 
we have App Store is also that works in this model too. If you have um, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, or every single game nowadays, use that thing. Okay, this model, very simple model. That is, you have an app, and then the app is going to talk to the server, which is some computers in some data center, right, connected to the internet. So it means that. Um, it will go in, if you upload some photo, then it will upload the photo to the server, to the backend, as we say. Or if you request to download some videos, then this thing will send a download request to the backend, saying that, hey, my backend, or hey, my data center, I want to have this video at this URL or at this location. Okay, and then the backend is going to return us some data. If we ask for some, uh, some videos, it's going to return us some videos or some photos or some messages, right? It's the same, for example, if you want to build a chat application, okay, a chat application, how does the chat, chat application works? Well, when I think of a chat application, no matter it is a web development or Android or iOS development, it works this way. We have a backend that store user information, that stores things like login, sign up, profile pictures, those kinds of things, and then store all the chat, all the messages, all the photos and videos, right? So for example, in a chat app, whenever I want to send a chat message to my friend, right? So let's say I have two devices over here, right? I have one device is this iPhone, and another one is this iPad over here, right? So I want to chat from this iPhone, to the iPad. How does it work? Does the iPhone send direct message to the iPad? No, it works like this. The iPhone, when I tap in a message, hello there, it is Duke, right? The message is going to send to our backend, to the server. And then, if we set up properly, that means that the message will directly send or fetch or update it into our another device. Okay, then this thing would send the message to my iPad or into this thing, right? Another client as we call it, okay? So this is the whole model. We have the, a bunch of devices, a bunch of iPhones, iPad, web browsers, and then one single backend or multiple data centers, those kind of things. If you think about the scale of Facebook, okay? That is it, that is that simple. But if we, now, when you go, when I, I teach a program called Socialize Your Apps, it is the program where I share with people how to build app like Facebook, Instagram, uh, Nike retail store, those kind of things. And in that program, we spend just four to five or six weeks and build the MVP, meaning the minimum viable product for those world-class apps. Now, it may sound crazy to you, when you think about building those apps, it takes like thousands of hours of thousands of people, right? But imagine, but think about it, when Facebook just got started, when Snapchat just got started, or Instagram just got started, there are only one or two or three people doing that, okay? So they only, they only need just a few people or just only you develop an MVP, a very simple features, the most important features of the app that you think that is different, that is adding values to people's lives, that is distinct from the marketplace. That's it. You don't have to do that scale of Facebook because hey, Instagram, it's all for the first few years, it's all about posting a bunch of photos on a news feed, and that's it. And now when Facebook goes into that, it adds more things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, those kind of things, or image processing, those kind of things, so that it can show you the photos that you are likely to see, you want to see, or explore people that you, maybe you want to see the photos, those kind of things. But it all boils down into this model. You have a bunch of clients, your users, using the phones, and then you have your backend just like that. So think about the app that you want to build. Think about the app that you want to build. What do you need? Well, you are going to need the app on the phone and you need a backend. I personally recommend Firebase or Heroku or 
Amazon, AWS. Okay, check out those three services. So that is all I want to talk about in this video. How you build those kinds of apps and how most apps now today's use those services. I hope that this video is valuable to you and also it is uh, maybe maybe it makes more clarity for you of the whole world of apps, of web apps, of services out there. And it my hope for you is that you realize you can be the next one who build something that millions of people or even just 10 people use it. It could be the best. It could be the job of a developer. And by the way, if you love this kind of training and you love to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button so that I can deliver free training videos for you every single week on this channel. And also, what I would love to do for you is I have this video series, a mini course of three videos that I share with you how to build Facebook, Nike Retail Store, and Instagram. So all you have to do, if you would love to have this thing, I would love to send that to you for free. All you have to do is to click the button somewhere on this page, right? Or below this video, there will be a link for you there. All you have to do goes to that link into your name and email so that I can send you that video series course on for free. How to build those apps in iOS with Swift, with Firebase, all those things. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Go out there as always, learn new things, craft your ideas and contribute to the world. I'll see you next time.